Hey guys, Bart from TSC Industries here. In this video, we're gonna show you how to install this Toast Performance Exhaust on a 2006 and up Yamaha R6. So let's begin. So in the first step, we will be removing this exhaust shroud here. We'll need to remove this fastener along with these two. Now the shroud will come off and we will need to loosen these nuts here on the flapper component here. This will allow us room to adjust down these cable adjusters and then remove them from the holders. Now we can back out the servo cable here and remove it. All right. Now we will move on to loosening this exhaust strap. Once this is loose, I will back out the screw all the way and that will allow this strap to open up and be removed from the setup. This component will be reused with the TOS exhaust, so we want to make sure we keep it. Alright, the next thing we will do is we'll be removing this fastener here from the canister. We want to support the exhaust from the bottom so it doesn't drop. And the exhaust will back out easily now. So what I'll do here is I'll weigh this exhaust for you guys so you can see the weight difference between OEM and TOS. So the OEM is roughly four pounds. Whereas the TOS exhaust is one pound, seven ounces. All right, so now we will need to mount the TOS exhaust onto the cap back here. First, I will remove the TOS shroud. This will give us nice access to this geometry that's used for clamping. I will make sure that the gasket and clamping components that held the OEM exhaust are still in place. We'll superimpose the TOS exhaust onto this setup here, making sure that I have alignment between the exhaust boss and the boss welded onto the exhaust here. And this sometimes takes a little bit of manipulation. What we need to do is make sure to slide this clamping system down enough to accommodate the length of this exhaust. This component here is split, so it allows some movement. And I will manipulate it down a little bit at a time until I achieve that perfect placement. And I think I'm good here. I will reuse the OEM exhaust bolt through here. Make sure it penetrates to the other side. I will also take the OEM setup and extract the nut from the other side of the exhaust here. We're going to want to reuse this guy. So I will thread that on by hand first to the back side of this bolt. We'll realign the exhaust one more time, making sure it's sitting center on the boss and finger tighten the setup. And then I will come down here and I will put the strap around this component just like that, making sure 
that will engage the split lock as well as, as, well as the toast exhaust and the gasket. So now we'll reuse the bolt that came out of this clamp. I like to make sure that the bolt itself is beyond the fairing line here. So finger, finger tighten it, and then we'll follow up with a tool. That's done. Now I just need to tighten up this bolted connection. All right, so to replace the shroud, I will use a thread locking compound. So as you're doing this, you do not want to tighten the first screw all the way just yet. You want to preserve some adjustability in the system here. As you go on to the next screw, apply thread locking compound. Now I will adjust the shroud to make sure it's not making contact with the pipe on the upper or lower side. And now I will lock it down to full tightness. All right, so at this point, we need to consider what to do with the servo motor cables. Since we've removed the OEM setup that has an X-up valve in the exhaust, these no longer drive the X-up valve. So some guys choose to tighten up these nuts, to make sure they don't spin off, and they zip tie this whole setup here in a way that it doesn't impede any movement of the braking system and doesn't buzz against anything. What we're gonna do for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna go a little bit further and we're gonna extract the servo mechanism from within the bike. We're gonna remove these cables so that we don't have them flapping around anywhere. So let's go on to that step. So now in order to get access to the servo mechanism, we'll need to remove the rear brake reservoir here. What I'll do here is temporarily move it out of the way and clamp it down with the hose so that it's out of our way. We'll now need to remove 10 millimeter hex head screw from right here. Now we'll jump around to the other side of the bike. There's another hex head screw here that we'll need to remove. Okay, now the servo mechanism is free from the frame. We'll go back to the right side of the bike. I will remove all the cable routing components here. That will allow us to remove brackets and disassemble the wiring here and separate it from these cables so we can gain access there and remove the cables. The zip tie here will have to be cut for now and replaced later. We also have another zip tie at the bottom here. it for now and replace it later. All right. There's also a guiding clamp for the cables that has one screw here. We'll need to remove that. All right now all of these components are free to come off. We have one additional 
thing that we should do before we extract it, and that is to remove this plug so we don't stretch any of the wires. We will need to replace that plug on the servo if we're replacing the servo. Now we'll take a little bit of manipulation to get this servo out. while making sure we don't snag any wires on the way out. All right. So now we can open up the rubber boot around the servo and get in here. And this will enable us to take out the cables just like this. Now this whole mechanism does not need to be reinstalled. We will reinstall this servo, even though it is not driving a, an actual valve in the exhaust anymore. And that's because if we don't, the bike will throw a fuel injection code or an engine code. And we just don't want to do that. There are uh, servo eliminators available on the market that will replace this whole thing with a small unit that plugs into this plug and fools the computer into thinking that the servo is still in place. For the purpose of this video, we will not be doing that install. We will just reinstall this servo in the place it was originally housed. So let's do that now. Make sure you're going in in this orientation. Make sure you clear all the cables here. We will plug it in. and realign it with its mounting position and mounting bosses on the frame. And what I like to do is start with the left side of the bike first. And the reason for that is on the right side here, we have an additional bracket that has to align with the mounting points. So we'll start with the simpler one on the other side first. I'm going to get it on here finger tight for now and move on to starting the threads on the other side. So all of these wires go through this routing clip on this bracket. So I'm going to get them in and just engage the routing clip on one click. I won't tighten it just yet. It'll give me some adjustability. Now I will engage the threads on this screw on this side. Now while holding this bracket in its original position, I'm going to tighten down this screw all the way and then I'm going to do the same on the other side of the bike all right now we have the servo back in now we'll just have to make sure that all these wires are zip tied together so we're going to put one zip tie around here and I believe that will be enough Now that the zip tie is in place, I'm gonna fully engage this routing clip. And it looks like I've immobilized all of these wires. So that's ready to go. I will now need to install this reservoir onto here. Anytime you remove a reservoir or braking component, you need to test your brakes afterwards, making sure there's no bubble in the line. For our case here, we had a lot of fluid in here and we didn't introduce any bubbles into the line, but I highly recommend testing the brake system before going riding. All 
All right, so this install is complete and this bike is ready to ride.